At this point, you should have familiarized yourselves with the terms that relate to body landmarks. In this section, we will discuss terms that relate to body orientation and direction. These directional terms are important because we use them to describe the location of one body part in relation to another. The terms in this section are generally the terms that most students have the most difficulty understanding and using correctly. So as we proceed, I will define each of the terms in your handout and provide examples of how to correctly use them. The first two terms on the list are superior and inferior. The term superior refers to structures that are above another structure or closer to the head. The term inferior refers to structures that are below another structure or away from the head. For example, let's assume that we want to use anatomical terms to describe the location of the skull in relation to the sternum or breastbone. When comparing structures, it's helpful to picture an arrow between them. But the question is, in which direction does the head of the arrow point? Toward the skull or toward the sternum? Remember the question was, where is the skull in relation to the sternum? So in this particular example, we want to find the skull. The head of the arrow should always point toward the structure we're looking for, which again, in this example, is the skull. Because the arrow is pointing upward toward the head, we say that the skull is superior to the sternum. Notice that on your handout, in parentheses, next to the term superior is the term cranial, and next to the term inferior is the term caudal. Each of these additional terms is included because they can be used interchangeably with the terms superior and inferior. So in our previous example, we said that the skull is superior to the sternum. However, we could also say that the skull is cranial to the sternum, or that the sternum is caudal to the skull. While the terms cranial and caudal are not used often in a first semester anatomy course, they are used more frequently in second semester courses when dissecting the fetal pig. For now, keep in mind that these terms are interchangeable. Before moving on to our next two terms, let's do one more example with superior and inferior. Let's assume that we're asked to describe where the urinary bladder is in relation to the diaphragm, a muscle involved in respiration. Remember to picture an arrow between the two structures, and that the arrow should point toward the structure we're looking for, which again, in this example, is the urinary bladder. Because the arrow points away from the head, we say that the urinary bladder is inferior or caudal to the diaphragm. The next two terms on your list are ventral and dorsal. The term ventral refers to structures that are toward the front of the body, while the term dorsal refers to structures that lie toward the back. For example, we want to describe the location of the sternum in relation to the vertebral column. Like before, picture an arrow between the two structures. The arrow in this example points toward the sternum, the structure we're looking for, and thus we say that the sternum is ventral to the vertebral column. Let's do another example. We want to know where the heart is in relation to the spinal cord. The arrow in this example will point toward the heart, the structure we're looking for. Because the arrow is pointing toward the front of the body, we say that the heart is ventral to the spinal cord. Going in the opposite direction, we say that the spinal cord is dorsal to the heart. Notice that, like the terms superior and inferior, there are also two additional terms which, when referring to the human body, can be used interchangeably with the terms ventral and dorsal. Those two terms are anterior and posterior. You should already be familiar with these terms having completed the section on anterior and posterior body landmarks. Note that on your handout next to those two terms there is an asterisk. The reason that asterisk is there is to remind you that, as these terms are written, they can be used interchangeably, but only when referring to the human body. When dissecting and studying a four-legged animal like the fetal pig, these terms cannot be used interchangeably. Although the first semester of this course focuses on the human body, this rule is something you should be aware of now to avoid confusion in the future. We'll discuss the next three terms on your list together since they relate to each other. Those three terms are medial, lateral, and intermediate. 
Medial refers to structures that are toward the midline of the body, while lateral structures lie away from the midline. For example, the spinal column, which lies along the midline of the body, is a medial structure. The humerus, which lies to the side of the body, is lateral. Intermediate refers to structures that are between a more medial and a more lateral structure. Therefore, we say that the scapula, which lies between the spinal column and humerus, is intermediate between the spinal column and humerus. As another example, we see that the heart is medial to the arm, and the arm is lateral to the heart. The right lung, which lies between the heart and right arm, is intermediate between the heart and arm. The next, two, the next two terms on your list, proximal and distal, are the two terms students generally find the most confusing. One of the keys to understanding and using these terms correctly is to remember that they are only used to describe structures in the appendages, that is, in the arm and leg. The term proximal refers to structures that lie toward the point of attachment of a limb to the main trunk of the body. In contrast, the term distal refers to structures that lie away from the point of attachment. So, for example, we want to know where the elbow is in relation to the wrist bones or carpals. Remember, picture an arrow between the elbow and the carpals. But which direction should the arrow point? Remember, we want to know where the elbow is in relation to the carpals. Therefore, the arrow should point toward the elbow. Notice that in this example, the arrow points toward the point of limb attachment. And consequently, we say that the elbow is proximal to the wrist or carpals. Let's do one more example. Which term should we use if we want to know where the phalanges are in relation to the kneecap or patella? In this example, the arrow will point down, away from the point of limb attachment. Consequently, you should have said that the phalanges are distal to the patella. The next two terms on your list are probably the easiest to remember and use. The term superficial refers to structures that are toward the surface of the body, while the term deep refers to structures that are more internal. For example, the skin and muscles are superficial to the skeleton as they lie more toward the exterior. The skeleton, on the other hand, is deep to the skin and muscles. The twelfth term on your list is one that you will most likely not see or use often, but it is one you should know because you may encounter it when looking at diagrams depicting specific cross-sections of dissected organs. And that term is oblique. Oblique means that two structures lie diagonally from each other. For example, the gallbladder and the left lobe of the liver are oblique to each other. The next term on the list, palmer, refers to the palm surface of the hand, and the term plantar refers to the sole of the foot. Remember that in anatomical position, the palm of the hand is on the anterior surface of the body, and the plantar surface of the foot is on the ground. The last two terms on the list are two which I'm sure most of you have never heard before. Those terms are ipsilateral and contralateral. Remember we use the term lateral to describe structures that lie toward the side of the body, away from the midline. The terms ipsilateral and contralateral describe structures that lie either on the same side of the midline or on opposite sides of the midline. For example, the right and left lungs are on opposite sides of the midline and are consequently referred to as contralateral. The left lung and the left arm, however, are on the same side of the midline and are therefore ipsilateral. Before moving on to the next section, review each of the directional terms we have just defined.